Hello guys, this is IDQ, and in this video we'll go over some things that like nobody does, but I think that should be uh, you guys should be more aware of. If you like this type of content, go to gamersclass.com for just $9.99 a month, watch masterclasses with pro players, join exclusive live sessions, and get 24-7 access to coaches and other high MMR players. Get full control of your ranked games and start owning with our Supreme Dota 2 membership. First one is buying Ghost Scepter, exactly like I did in this game on course, such as anti-mage and you know, heroes that really don't want to get caught instead of, I mean, don't want to get right click down instead of just uh, on position 5 supports or something like that. For example, this uh, Grimstroke has a Ghost Scepter. Because uh, anti-mage is one of the heroes that it actually works, Ghost Scepter on anti-mage. For example, let's look at the enemy team. They have a Slazar. I just died, by the way. Obviously, I'm dead. I'm playing anti-mage. I got permanently bashed by this guy. Four hits is a bash. He has uh, a lot of damage. I mean, a lot of attack speed from Shadowblade, attack speed from Orchid, attack speed from the Leveler. And also, they have a lifestyle that has a Divine MKB, a Bissell Blade. He's so farmed, as you can see. He's actually ahead of me. 16 kills. So, yeah. Uh, if you look at what's going to happen is that this item just won me the game by buying Ghost Scepter on anti -Mage. Any other item would have probably lost me the game. The thing about it ghost scepter is on anti-mage is that you other spells don't work on you right since you have counter spells you don't really care about any magical damage if you get a 20 percent counter spell magic resistance from this or this is maxed you obviously have like around uh as you can see wait only 20 percent no it's a bug i guess it doesn't show this you have a lot of um magic resistance so you don't really care about spells so Ghost Scepter solves a lot of the issues. I mean, the only issue that you have, the physical damage. On uh, other heroes that you should be considering buying this would be anything that really doesn't want to get right clicked by the enemy core. It doesn't really matter uh, if you're a support or not. Just mainly you should be buying more, more Ghost Scepter. One interesting thing about anti mages or any other core heroes is that you might lack. Um, you might lack the damage, right? But you can upgrade it in E-Blade. And one super good thing about it is, it obviously gives you 10 strength, 10 intelligence, 40 agility. So you have enough damage. 40 agility gives you, you know, uh, a lot of armor around, wait, how much is it? It gives you six armor, six armor and a bit actually. Maybe even seven. Also 200 HP, but you also gain the ability to, to cancel Link and Sphere. For example, I believe in this game, Oh, never mind. They don't have a Lincoln on enemies. But if they would have a Lincoln Sphere, I could just go in, E Blade someone, then a Beastle, and then Ult, right? Just a normal combo and anti -mage. But let's see what's happening right now. Enemies have 19,000 gold advantage, they have a Divine. And yeah, I just bought back. So if I die, game is over. I go on Lifestealer. I kite back with Ghost after a bit. Uh, I don't think we'll go actually goes in. Let's see. I don't believe I would be jumping here right now. Or soon. Okay, last level came out. Now I can probably go. Yeah, so look at this. 3, 2 seconds, 1 second cooldown on Ghost Scepter. That's why I was that. This is what I was waiting for. I was going to die there, right? Like, most likely I have no... I don't, I'm coiled, so I can bleak out. I'm silenced. I'm like, there's nothing that I can really do about it. So the opponent just retreated since I pressed Ghost Scepter. I believe if you skip ahead of it, I will still use it. And yeah, like I said, this this is sort of the usual uh, item build on anti mage. I mean, the first three items. I mean, threads into battlefield, manta, abyssal. But then you know, I went setting because I wanted to dispel stuff. So yeah, let's see the ghost after again. I mean, e blade now. I go on life stealer. Just going on them. I know the opponents don't really have buyback. Just use ult. I mean, this kind of, uh, yeah, they're just retreating. I believe the game is over. But you saw that uh, here. I only survived because of the Ghost Scepter, most likely. He's still really strong, a lifestealer. He has cheese and divine also, and, you know, can most likely kill me. If he, if they get, like, two, three bashes on me, I'm dead. So Ghost Scepter is super, super good on course, even though you might only use it just like this, uh, just to survive, right? It's not a great item uh just for survivability not offensively until you get e-blade another heroes that you might want to bite against is slark um pa 
Ursa troll, anything that only can only like hurt you by physical damage. In this game, obviously, life stealer slaughter. You can bite on like any core. It's 1,500 gold, but it makes you like almost invulnerable to all the physical damage, obviously. So unless they buy a uh, nullifier, which is like 5,000 gold or even more, you're safe from every uh, almost 5,000 gold, and nobody's really buying this, right? They wouldn't really buy a 5,000 gold item to counter. An item that costs only 1,500. So because of this, I think that Ghost Hunter is highly underrated on course, and I believe more people should do it. This game is gonna uh, end really soon in a week because I attribute it to the Ghost Hunter that I just bought. All right, guys. The second thing that I haven't seen anyone do, but I think is super super strong, is um, giving your middle laner tangos. <laughs> uh, now people think that you can't really do it anymore, but the but you can actually, because they expire in 40 seconds, so it's actually like this. After you take the rune, or try to pick it up, the bounty rune, then your support should come to you and give you a, uh, give you tango. I just pinged this guy to give me a tango. So he ended up giving me a tango. And I have 40 seconds to use it, right? I have 40 seconds to use it. So let's say 10 seconds in, until 50 seconds. The first phase is almost over. So because of this... Um, you're able to gain an advantage in mid lane because you have one more tango, right? If I buy tangos, which I don't know if I do, I believe I'll just go for bottle. But I have one tango that's just free, you know, to use. I just use it and I can tank the creeps, harass this enemy, harass my mid laner. As you can see, he took like 200 damage because of the fire shield and stuff. And I'm still 100% HP almost. So as you can see, just right there, he's 485 HP. I'm 100 more HP than him. Just because, of, just because of this tango that uh, I received from my support that I asked for. Uh, so yeah, try to give tangos to your mid laner, even though right now uh, it's not that useful. You need to give them after you pick up the bounty runes, they will expire in 40 seconds. Another thing about tangos that is really interesting, I mean not really interesting, uh, now they i guess they forgot to mention it in the change log but tangos have no cooldown so you can give your carry 100 tangos for no just you know just give it repeatedly instead of being once uh one minute cooldown as before right so you could just buy like nine tangos 10 tangos i mean all the tangos that you want and just give the your course tangos uh because it has no cooldown anymore so it's no drawback from buying your uh from buying heals to your course which is super super important. I believe that core shouldn't be buying tangos anymore. Just support to give them <laughs> everything basically. Because there's no longer a cooldown. So so one tango goes for 15 seconds. Actually 16 seconds. But uh, you can just give them infinitely right now. Instead of being one minute cooldown. So it's basically reducing the downtime of shedding tangos by um, 44 seconds. So, which is insane, and it's not set in the chain log. So, I believe right now support should start with like 9 tangos at least. I mean, not at least, at least 6 tangos, but then buy 3 more from uh, the couriers. I mean, from the bounty run, and bring them to to the lane and share them with their course whenever they feel like it. Another thing that I don't see enough people do is exactly what is going to happen right here. For example, if I mean, all, one guy should be going to the opponent's room, that's what I mean. Um, right here, as I, you will see me right now, draw on the map, as you can see on the minimap. Just this guy to go like this, and go behind and try to pick up this bounty run. Because usually, if you don't really want to fight for runes, for example, I see two heroes bottom, two heroes top, we will be in a numbers disadvantage, right? There are already three top, this guy might be coming here, so four heroes top, four v2, we will lose the rune. There's no way we can go there. Especially since they have a... We run arrow, so it's really hard for us to contest the rune. Vin stun into Mirana arrow and then someone is dead 100%. So instead what I ask my support to do is just go around. Right As you can see right, right there, I drew on the map, I pinged for him to go. And then what you need to do is uh, try to distract the enemies, right? Just sit here towards the rune, uh, I mean close to the rune, and just go back whenever you see the opponent. Because usually they will have vision here, right? Where they are. As you can see, uh, they have vision here with this Winter Wyvern. 
so they know that I'm closer there. But they will wait until the um, uh, runes spawn, so they will go in. So they have vision of me. I ping, I see this guy, now I start to retreat. I spotted two people, so I know they're like here. They're all here, taking the rune. Meanwhile, my support just pick up their bounty rune. So because of that, it's really, really good. Uh, Ursa did the same thing, as you can see. Since, uh, yeah, they knew that there were four teammates, there were four people top from his team, so he can't really contest this bottom rune. So he just goes here and picks up our bounty rune. If he didn't do this, we would have uh, three bounties, meanwhile the enemy is only one. But yeah, I think this is one of... Uh, one trick that not many people use or don't really think about. But it's really, really useful. You give your team like 200 gold, just like that, by going around. I believe that we have all seen uh, someone farm like this, like Medusa, Gyrocopter with Flak Cannon, or, you know, uh, in this manner of way. Farming multiple campus at once. It is possible just by spells, right? We just, uh, as I said before, split shot or flat cannon. But I don't think enough people think about doing this with other heroes that have uh, spells that I'm about to show next. So this is how uh, usually people farm a camp, right? They just do this, press their spells, you know, hit it two or three times, and the camp is dead. But decide what they should be doing when they have an ability like this, Scream of Pain, is to drag two camps together, like this, right? You hit this, you go towards this one, and then you press Scream of Pain. And you damage both camps at the same time. As you can see, and if you repeat this again, both camps are almost dead, right? Instead of just one, like I showed you here. It's a lot more efficient to do this, like this, right? Since you press one spell for both camps, instead of um, one spell for one camp. Other heroes that can do this is Storm Spirit, you just drag the creeps in the middle, press your Q on uh, Storm, Zeus can do the same. A lot of heroes that have uh, range nukes, right, in an AoE or just an area there. Yeah, something like that. You should, guys, you should consider it. Some other heroes that I can do, what I mentioned before, is Razor with uh, his Q, Viper with W, Puck now with Q, um, Puck with first two spells, Necro even, a lot more heroes that can do this. So you should consider doing this. Previous video I talked about how you would uh, use Echo Saber for Silver Edge, and people pointed out that you don't really. I guess they... Uh, didn't remember that you can disassemble items and stuff like that, which is I want to go over this since uh, I feel like people could learn from this. For example, uh, you can disassemble uh, perseverance. If you have perseverance, you can just have a ring of health and go from this war of vanguard. Let's say from this you could go voice on into a yule scepter or something like this. So yeah, I'm gonna sell that. Uh, other important one would be arcane boots so arcane boots are really important one since you can use it for mana right for yourself and for your allies but then when you don't need it anymore i mean you need it for etherlands for example right if i just want to buy etherlands and uh, i need three components right but i could just buy voice stone recipe then disassemble this and then like this you see i just um disassemble it and have Etherlands by not uh, by just disassemble it. Another thing that's really important, I mean not really important, but you could do with it for the Bloodstone, right? Uh, you have Arcane Boots, you want to go for Bloodstone, so you buy Akaya, let's see, or so Spirit, buy this and this, and then you just disassemble this, and you don't waste a lot of gold by buying it again, right? It's an important thing also for Bloodstone. Another trick would be using Mask of Madness into this a Morbid Mask and Quarter Stuff. From this you could buy Satanic, obviously. You just get a Satanic and from the Quarter Stuff you could go for uh, a lot of items. You could go for Orchid, you could go for Silver Edge, you could even buy a Butterfly. So it depends whatever you need in the game, obviously. Another thing would be Echo Saber, as I said before in the uh, video that you guys pointed out. Obviously, Obivian Staff could go with these items. 
or kid malevolence or silver edge and then from the ogre X could buy a lot of stuff agony scepter pkb dragon lance sanj a lot of stuff senior can also be disassembled and uh, yeah, you obviously get <laughs> Sanj and Yasha from Sanj. You could go into a Halbert if you want, right? If the enemies have a Huskar, Troll, PA, something like that, Ursa even, you have an SNY, you can just disassemble it and then buy a Halbert. Also, Halbert can be disassembled, I believe. Um, yes, for, and from Yasha, you can obviously just buy a Manta, which is obviously really good. So, by disassembling Halbert, you gain. Obviously, I mean the Sanj, but this is the important part, Talisman of Evasion. You can buy a Butterfly from this, right? If you buy a Halberd as a mid-game item, and then you get towards the late game, and you want a Butterfly, right, for the attack speed and stuff, since it doesn't really give you a lot more damage, the Halberd is just survivability, you can just disassemble it, right? As I said before, unblock this, and then buy it. Uh, butterfly, which is really, really good. Another freak, uh, trick that you could use like this i haven't seen a lot of people do it is buying um buying uh Netherlands, but not just like this as i'm showing you right now you need to lock combining it to lock the combining of these two items because for example if i would have had it combined right then there's a team fight or something there's an enemy zeus or whatever the main point is if you're not full hp this item can proc right and you don't want it if the enemies have um, something like uh, Enigma or whatever, and you want, or Chronosphere, which is the most important part, right? The Chronosphere or Black Hole or RP, you want to dispel them with this. But you don't want it procking randomly, right? There's a Shaker here fissuring you, or Zeus Ultimate randomly, and you just get it procked. Okay, so as I said before, there's. Uh, you want it to use against a Chronosphere, right? But you can't really do it if there's a Zeus in the enemy team, something like that because it will proc the main part i mean the good part is you still get the stats right so yeah as zeus ulting it doesn't really do anything then i get chronosphere and i want to block the damage coming in from chronosphere so by doing this you uh gain the ability to sort of use it for the first time because afterwards you can't really disassemble it or anything like that but yeah it's an important part that is really really useful in that sense